Hi, welcome back to Bergeron Briefs. In this episode, in five minutes, how can you avoid probate? And, and of course, the corollary question, what is probate? So, suppose that you are one of my friends, Frank and Mary. You've got three kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Your goal in life is to live in your house until you die and be buried in the backyard. Your basic estate plan is, if, if one of you dies, you want every, the surviving spouse to get everything. After that, you want things to be divided among your kids. Uh, and suppose that those are your assets. You got a house that's owned jointly. Frank's got an IRA. Mary's got a, or, or Frank's got an annuity that names Mary as the uh, beneficiary. And you've got joint bank accounts. And now suppose Frank dies. Is probate necessary? Well, in that case, actually, no. Because all of the assets, because there were only two kinds of assets, assets that were owned jointly by Frank and Mary, and as to those assets, the moment that Frank died, Mary became the, sole, became the sole owner. And an asset, the IRA, on which there was a named death beneficiary. And as a result of that, that asset will be paid immediately to Mary. So in that case, there was no issue about probate. But the question is, what is probate? The point of probate is to figure out who gets what after you die if you haven't made it clear before you die. Um, so as to those joint assets that we were just talking about, um, because they were joint, when Frank died, Mary become the, became the immediate owner. Because IRAs and 401ks and other tax deferred funds and also annuities typically name death beneficiaries, if Frank died and left one of those assets naming the death beneficiary, the issue of who, who gets what has all been cleared up, so that's not a question. The reason why you want to avoid probate is that it takes at least a year because creditors of yours have one year from the date of your death to file a claim against the probate estate before assets can be divided up, and it costs money. Uh, the probate process is going to cost you probably $5,000 in legal fees, and if the family isn't really uh, getting along well, it risks fighting. Um, Regarding, so what goes through probate? Well, tangible personal property, the stuff that's around the house, if Frank dies, it's presumed that the spouse gets it. And when the two of them have died, no one's gonna care, um, unless the kids are arguing about this stuff, um, whether who gets what, and therefore probate's not gonna be necessary. The car is going to be presumed to be jointly owned by the surviving spouse. When the spouse dies, though, you do need to deal with who gets the car, that's probably one of the most, most common reasons for an inadvertent probate. Uh, once again, going back, those were, those were Frank and Mary's assets. If, if Frank died, as we described, Mary gets all the assets. But what if Mary dies the next day? Well, in that case, that's not clear at all. Um, you've got this house, which is gonna need to go through the probate process. Um, Frank's IRA, is, unless it's been turned into Mary's IRA, is going to go through probate. If, unless Mary changed the annuity, that's gonna go through probate. The bank accounts are, not, are now all owned just by Mary, so that goes through probate. So the question is, how do you deal with all of that? Can you avoid probate? Well, as we just discussed, one way to avoid probate is to make sure that all of your assets are owned by two people jointly, so that when one of them dies, the other one becomes the sole owner. So as it relates to that car that we were talking about a little bit earlier, if Mary's now the sole owner of the car, and she doesn't want that to go through probate, one simple way to deal with that would be to name one of her kids as a joint owner with her on the car. At that point, typically the kids say, no, I don't wanna be on the car with my mother, she's a terrible driver. At which point I always say, well in that case, increase the insurance. A second way, or a second thing you can do, and it's similar to joint tenancy, is you can create, if you're married, a life estate in your house. Keep a life estate, which means total ownership of your house until the moment that you die. But, but, but convey to your kids a remainder interest, that is the interest that starts at the moment of your death. A third th way that you can deal with this is through pre-death gifts. Tell the person who has your power of attorney, and if you wanna know what that is, look at my, my five minute brief on powers of attorney, that if you're getting sick before you die, he or she should simply, on your behalf, with your power of attorney, transfer all of the assets to the people who were supposed to get them. You, that, this, that will el eliminate the need for probate. Finally, there are revocable trusts. Uh, and we're gonna talk about those in a little bit later on. So we talked about joint tenancy. It's gonna, it's gonna avoid these family feuds. The joint tenant is the presumptive owner. A life estate only deals with real estate, remember. But by using that life estate mechanism, you can assure that following your death, those assets are gonna go directly to the kids. Now, there may be some reasons to avoid this, you may not want to transfer these assets while you're alive or transfer this interest 
in case one of the kids or a creditor then claims that they have an interest in your house, but it's a mechanism for, for, for dealing with these issues. The, uh, the, the issue with gifting uh, works extremely well, but remember the gifting ends at death, ends at death. Um, but, and finally, there is the revocable trust. Through, through the revocable trust, you can structure something where you can keep control of the assets as the trustee of that trust, but specify that following your death, some other person, typically one of your kids, will become the successor trustee and can distribute assets on your behalf. So the goal of the exercise here is to simply, to, is to find out whether you need probate or not, and then to figure out what the alternatives are if you've got questions about this, give me a call or give your attorney, give an elder lawyer a call. I, you can call me at 508-860-1470 or you can email me. Remember, the goal of all of this is to, is to sleep well at night. Thank you very much.